For a lot of my students, creating tables in Bubble has been a bit of a mystery in the past. With the new Bubble Responsive Engine, it's actually now a lot easier. We can create tables uh, that look great on desktop and then also tables that are scrollable on mobile. So let's jump in and see how we can build this. So first of all, I'm going to upgrade to the new Responsive Engine. Okay, and then I'm going to bring the inspector back up. Head over to layout on the page itself. Going to change this to column as we're just working down the page. And I'm going to change the width to 1280. That's now, 1280 is now the, the build camp uh, standard page width. It used to be 960, but um, We've gone an extra 320 up to 1280 just because we can flex is so great that it gives us the opportunity to do this. And I'm just going to set the height to 1280 as well, give ourselves a bit of room. Okay, now I'm going to grab a group, drop it on the page. This is going to be my uh, content page, content group, sorry, content. This is going to be a column as well. I'm going to remove the fixed width. Don't care about min width. Um, and let's just fit height to content. So it just stretches the full height. I'm going to change to my wireframe with 10% opacity. Okay, and then lastly on this group, I'm going to add a max width of 1280. This is why I have a main content group so that it doesn't stretch wider than 1280. And then I'm just going to say, um, give me 80 pixels of top margin. All right, good stuff. Uh, I'm just going to bring in some text called a tables. Change it to H1. I'm just going to knock it in by 40 pixels to the left. Don't care about min height. Don't care about the width either. Okay, let's work at our repeating group. First of all, we need data. So I have data in this example. I created a custom data type called people. And I just pulled in some people data. So this is basically what we're recreating this, aren't we? We're creating basically this table view. All right, let's grab a repeating group. Let's just set up the content source, which is just, you know, do a search for people. Okay, in terms of the design itself, I'm actually going to just say, um, I don't want a fixed number of cells. I just want it to grow according to how many things are in the database. So I'm just going to set this to 100% min height. So you can see that this is now one full row and it's only going to be one column. Don't care about them in width. I'm going to uncheck fixed width, so it spans full width. Don't care about them in height. Actually, I do care about them in height. I'm going to set that to 100 for now. Give ourselves some space to work within, and then 40 left, 40 right. Just wondering on tables, yeah, I'm going to add 40 to the right as well. And then just 40 top margin. Okay, good stuff. And lastly, I'm just going to change the cells container layout column. Okay, so we're talking about the cell. How should content stack in the cell? Should content stack as a row or should content stack as a column? I'm going to set it to column. So the design we're after has a header in the first cell. Name, position, email, that kind of thing. So to achieve this, I'm going to bring in a group and draw it in the repeating group itself. We call this group, actually group, let's call it group titles, titles. Now the container layout for group titles, which is text positioned uh, next to each other is going to be a row, text to the left or text to the right. It's going to be a row side by side. It's not fixed width, 
but I am actually going to set the min width to 960 and there's a very good reason for this and we'll get onto that. I'm going to set the min height to 30 because I'll give ourselves some space to work within and I'm going to change the style to wire. Okay. So the first column is going to be an image. So I'm going to actually going to mimic an image here. So it's going to be a hidden group. I'm just not going to rename this guy. Um, I'm going to leave it at, at fixed. And I'm going to say 40 by 30. And then I'm going to knock it in by 20. So what we need to do is whatever we create in this titles row, we're just going to copy and paste that beneath. Um, because in order for a table to work responsively, what we see in the header has to exactly mimic the exact same settings, um, res the responsive settings down below for the actual body content. Okay, now I'm going to grab some text, draw it in there. I'm going to say name. I'm just going to change the style here quickly. Let's make that 14 because I'm using all caps. Just a basic gray color. No line spacing. And on the layout, uh, it's not fixed width. Okay, not fixed width. No min width, no min height. And I'm going to position that in the center. Lastly, I'm going to add 20 pixels of margin left, right. Okay, so it's at this stage that I'm going to actually change the container layout, just thinking about this, to space between. Space between, so that this will now distribute even space between all these elements. I'm going to copy and paste this four times. So that's one, two, three, four. Nice even spacing. Let's say this is position. Let's call this email. And let's just say this is just a random date. All right, styling. I should have actually done this before. So um, I apologize about that. Should have done that before. I copied and pasted, copy formatting, paste formatting, paste formatting, paste formatting. Okay, so we have a repeating group in this group content, the group content has a max width of 1280. So if we preview this, it won't stretch wider than 1280. Okay, so we're seeing all of this content. Let's now, um, I'm going to go back to the group content and just center it in the middle of the page. And I'm also going to bring up the Chrome developer tools so I can look at responsive. I did it in the wrong tab. Let me do it in this tab. Uh, let me first close that Chrome developer tools, bring it up here. Okay, good stuff. So now we can view this responsibly. And lastly, let me just remove, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, screen is getting wider, but the content is not. As we squeeze down, we actually stop at 960 and we have a scroll bar. So this is really the secret source for creating basically mobile tables at work in mobile and on desktop. All right, let's continue with this. So let's say that we're going to collapse this group, group titles when hidden. Uh, it's not going to be visible on page load and we're only going to show it when the current cells index is one. So first cell only. Okay, uh, on the repeating group, I saw that we had a divider. I'm just going to remove the style so we don't have a divider. And from here, our job is actually quite simple because all we're going to be doing is just copying and pasting the responsive work we've done beneath and then um, updating the static text with dynamic text. So here is our header or our titles. So there's content beneath. All I'm going to do is go copy paste. Okay, there it is there. This is visible on page load, <laughs> excuse me. So remove the collapse when hidden and remove the conditional. So this is group body. So notice how I've 
we've got our content in a group. We've got our content in a group because it's the group that we set the min width of 960 so that we see the scroll bar when the page squeezes down too far and the content becomes squishy. So basically by having a min width, by grouping the content and having a min width, we're preventing the content from squeezing down to show a scroll bar. I'm going to set a min height of 60 for the body. I'm going to change this uh, image. It's currently a group. I want an image in there. So actually, let me delete that a sec. And because it's set to space between, it's actually going to push the image to the far right hand side, but we'll fix that now. So just draw a little image in there, find the image and just choose make first. I'm going to, what I want for this image is keep aspect ratio fixed, one to one, and at 40. And now I'm going to choose 20 pixels left margin. And I'm going to say, please center that guy. Let's hook up the dynamic data here. So we have, okay, I need to set up the data. So this is people. Current cells people that feeds the data through to the parent groups people's image. Um, now let's bring in this dynamic data. This is parent groups people's name. While well, I'm here, I'm just going to style this how I like it. That's better. And I'm going to let me just copy and paste the new formatting across the board here. Paste, oops. Paste formatting, paste formatting. You can see how quick this is now that we've done all the design work. This is the position. This is the email. And this is the date. So let's just say the date can be the creation date. And we'll just format that as something simple. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to change this wireframe back to default group, all the way back to default groups, and let's see what this looks like. All right, down to tablet size, so um, 1024. We can see that the email address starts to wrap slightly, but that's okay, that's expected. And now we're down to mobile size. And as you can see, our table is working beautifully in our mobile phone. So in terms of um, truncation, we can't actually truncate email because truncation works per word. So it truncates words out of the equation. So a sentence can be, a sentence with three words can be truncated down to two words. An email address is one word. So we can't truncate an email address. It just basically, will um, remove the email address altogether. We can set up conditionals to say, look, if the, if the email address is longer than 16 characters, then make the email address 13 characters plus dot, dot, dot. In this example, we're keeping it simple. We just wrap it to the next line um, and that's acceptable. But at a desktop size, perfectly nice and neat. We've got our titles here, We've got all of our content exactly how we'd like it. And again, the trick we used is we grouped the titles, we grouped the body content, and we set a min width of 960 on those groups so that when we hit 960, which we're at now, the scroll bar appears, and then we can use it on mobile. I hope that was useful. So uh, have fun with it, and I'll see you in the next course.